Will the iPhone label soon say Made in America? Well, according to one report, opportunities to move production over to the states from China are actually being explored. So joining us now to break this down is Jeremy Kaplan, Editor-in-Chief at Digital Trends. Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. As always, thanks for having me. So back in June, according to this report, this is in the Nikkei Asian Review, Apple asked two of its manufacturers, Foxconn and Pegatron, to move its production to America, whether this was even possible. Now, Foxconn agreed, according to this report. Pegatron said no, citing cost concerns. So let's take a look at Apple. How would such a move actually impact Apple? It's a, it's a fascinating question, and I think that the concept of made in the USA is something a lot of people can rally behind, people here in the U.S., that is. Um, but can it actually happen? Well, the simple answer is, is yes. It, it's something that is physically doable, but the reality of it is that it's probably impractical to actually consider, which is why one of those two companies you mentioned said, we're not even going to posit a scenario where we could, where we could do this. Um, I think the first thing that, to ask about is, is what would this mean for consumers? Um, and the cost of an iPhone would certainly increase, you know, maybe $100 if it was made in the USA. Um, that's a cost that Apple could readily absorb. Um, Apple makes an incredible profit margin on their products, and they can certainly suck that cost in. But will it happen? Um, I was actually in Korea just three weeks ago, and I saw some of the, the facilities where high-tech products are manufactured, and these are gigantic, enormous plants, one after another. And there's just so much infrastructure in the whole supply chain that the concept of picking it up and putting it in the U.S. is almost hard to, to, to fathom. So there's just a, a lot of logistics behind doing that that really make it less practical than one might think. Yeah, and, and you bring up some good points there, uh, not the least of which is this idea that it could cost $100 more to manufacture an iPhone in the States. Now, I realize there's a lot of question marks around this, but if you see the new Trump administration come in and actually overhaul uh, the corporate tax code, do things like spur infrastructure investment in the States, could that make this more feasible? Uh, yes and no. Um, look, the one thing that I keep thinking about is um, Apple is reported to have $150 billion parked overseas, right? What if the Trump yeah. administration came in and said, we will eliminate all taxation on that, allow you to repatriate those funds if you invest in manufacturing in the U.S.? That would create the capital necessary to make this happen. Um, I, I don't see, so I'm saying even with some changes to tax policy and government policy, there's, there's a, a great way for this to happen. But what's the benefit for Apple to do this? Apple's a company that's shown us that they are very aware of the bottom line and very cognizant of what makes for good business practices. And it's hard to see what the positive ramification is for Apple beyond the benefits of saying, yes, we make this in the USA and beyond maybe this being a good thing for American workers. And, um, beyond, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Well, I was going to say beyond that, there's, we, we've heard a lot about the, the international policy changes that might occur because of this. Yeah. The Chinese government doesn't want all of their jobs to flee to the USA. They don't want manufacturing to, to leave their country. And they have announced some drastic things that they might do if something like this were to happen. Yeah, and you bring up a good point on that, especially where these trade questions are concerned. But just focusing in on Foxconn specifically, I know you mentioned you were in Asia touring some of these factories in recent weeks. I've actually been to the Foxconn's facility, which is just across the U.S. border in Mexico. Foxconn's Apple's biggest customer. So in light of talk about things like tearing up, potentially tearing up NAFTA, would a move to the states actually impact Foxconn? Would that help it if we were to see trade relations there change? That's a great point. Um Bringing, uh, there's, a, there's a question of whether we can do it here in the U.S., whether uh, Americans are able to do this, this type of assembly line work, and I think mm. that they definitely could. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Uh, Mexico would be affected. China would be affected. A lot of these gigantic international conglomerates like Foxconn would be affected. Uh, Han Hai Manufacturing Company in Taiwan. Um, and the, the supply chain is one that is a global thing but is centered uh, away from the U.S. over in the, the Asian markets. So we have, you know, memory chips coming from Korea, and we have glass coming from Japan, we have parts being made in Mexico. And to rejigger all of that involves changes to the shipping chains as well. Yeah. There's just so many different ramifications that it becomes such a logistics challenge. Yeah. And if Apple were to actually start bringing, and I realized, again, a lot that uh, there's a lot of pieces in motion. You just laid some of them out. But if you were to see Apple actually bring at least some of its manufacturing back to the States, do you think we would see other American tech companies follow suit? If, there's a, a lot of ifs here, as you're pointing out. I know. <laughs> if Apple were to make some of this happen, and maybe they start by building an assembly plant and just shipping parts here, 
Um, that could lend to some of the manufacturing coming over here. And if Apple can jumpstart some of that and get some of this going, sure, I think it would be very reasonable to, for other companies to say, we like to say made in the U.S. as well. Um, there's a, I think there's a groundswell of support for that that could really occur. But there's, you know, $50 billion worth of investment that has to happen first. Yeah. So as you mentioned, a lot of ifs here, a lot of money that would potentially be on the line if we were to see changes such as this. Jeremy Kaplan, thank you for laying this out for us. Thank you My for pleasure. watching. I'm Morgan Brennan. Have a great day. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.